Hello everybody. I hope everybody is good. I hope that you can hear me. I need to check out everything is okay. I see people still coming in. Don't worry, you won't uh, be seeing me on uh, your screen a lot. I will put myself in the corner. Uh, let's see. Well, I have to welcome everybody on uh, IT Product Connections 2020. Uh, I am very happy to be here. I was here uh, at IT Product Connections three years ago. That it got started 2009 to be to be exact. Uh, it's it's weird that uh, today's uh, event is uh, virtual, but. Let's hope that uh, next year we will uh, have it live so we can interact with each other. I see many uh, friends and uh, known names uh, uh, in that in this uh, list, so I'm very happy about it and uh, new people coming. So this is pretty, pretty nice. Uh, the event uh, this year is, is huge. We have people from all around the world. Uh, this is what uh, uh, the a virtual event has uh, uh, as a plus, uh, we have to thank our sponsors that uh, gave us the chance to, to make this uh, happen. Well, if you don't know me, let me. So all these uh, sponsors, thank you very much. And of course, we have to thank you, the attendees that uh, came to, uh, to this event. We'll try to, to make the best of it. So, uh, who am I, for those that, that you don't know me? I'm George Kavalakis. I'm currently working as a contractor uh, at the role of risk management and uh, security architect at PMP Parba uh, Fortis in uh, Belgium. Uh, I was working for uh, 14 years in uh, the healthcare industry, and thus, last year, uh, from my role as Chief Formation Officer, I got uh, the Top 100 Leaders uh, Award in uh, the global healthcare industry. Uh, I have an experience more than 20 years in IT. I'm also founder CEO of uh, Black Track Consulting and uh, Hoodoo Management. And uh, most of you know that uh, I'm a member of admin at autojet.gr and a member of azurehedge.gr. That th these are two of the communities that make this event uh, possible. And it's pretty good that all the communities come together and uh, it's pretty nice. So, uh, what we're gonna talk today, we're gonna talk about uh, fishing, but from a different angle, you know? Uh, I'm gonna show just a glimpse of uh, hands-on on something because uh, we have at uh, 4.30 uh, an expert level presentation about post-fishing automation with uh, Mirana and the uh, Necro Browser that uh, for those that are in that level, can go there and see uh, how to use these tools. But generally, we we're going to talk about the never ending problem fishing, generally, some fishing techniques, social engineering, and we'll get, we'll get the thing of it uh, from the aspect of the business, of the IT, how we should interact with it, and what we can do. The level is uh, intermediate, and the reason is that I don't want to uh, explain some of the uh, knowledge, common knowledge that, that will be much uh, uh, for some, uh, so, but I will try to make it as understandable and easy as I can. Uh, so, I think that everybody knows uh, what's fishing. Let me put myself in the corner because I forgot that. Okay. I'm here, okay. Give me one moment. So, uh, everybody see me? Let me check. Uh, what's fishing? Fishing, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I have a, 
a slight problem. Give me one moment for this. Oh. Uh, come on, uh, so uh, I hope that you can see me now. Okay, I'm sorry I had a slight uh, problem, uh, we fixed it. So, uh, why fishing is critical? As you know, fishing, because I took it very fast, is the further like attempt to obtain uh, sensitive information or data such as username, passwords, and credit card details, generally you know what's it's the attempt to take our uh, credentials. Uh, I have to apologize for the delay uh, just a moment ago because I had a slight issue on, uh, on the problem and on the application, but we are here and we can continue. Why is phishing is critical? First of all, because in general, most hacking attempts get obsolete at some point in time. Okay, and uh, this is something that you have to understand because technology advances and uh, uh, we, generally the IT industry, uh, comes with new ideas, new trends, and thus all the attacks, all techniques uh, come obsolete. But not when we're talking about fishing. When we're talking about fishing, we're talking about something that started back in 1995. And I think it will be many years uh, alongside with us. Okay. So fishing is the first step in order to be able to perform any other type of attack. Because it opens a door uh, to uh, the target. Uh, we have many... Uh, uh, Examples like Necro Browser that advanced uh, phishing tools work using technologies and phases, services that we are being presented and will be presented during the current IT Pro Dev Connections 2020. So, the means, the main means that uh, uh, phishing comes to us is through emails, messages on social media. You know, everybody, all of us have had uh, such an experience. Text messages in generally, in all the ways that people can communicate. There are many techniques in phishing. Okay, there are spare phishing. That's when we get an email from a brand or individual that we know and we trust. So this one, uh, one form. It's also vising as a service, uh, like vising is uh, voice, voice phishing. We also have smishing, SMS phishing. We have whaling that goes to bigger targets, CEOs and stuff like that. We have uh, attempts like the waterhole attack, and this is how it can be described. I don't want you to focus on what uh, its technique does because this is not my point at the current state. We have HTTPS phishing and this is just part of the phishing te techniques. And why so many different names? Someone might, might ask. It is that it depends on the size of the fish and it depends on the social engineering approach. So.
let's think how it got started. When it got started back in the 90s, we have we had scam, spam, and phishing. This tree, it was like kind of mixed. It was something that it was in our mind. It was I got a spam or scam email. It was a phishing email because all these uh, were together. It, it, it was how it got started. It had the same meaning. Uh, not it wasn't the same, but the they used the same techniques in the same uh, attempts and attacks. So we have the cybercrime being advanced in that pace, as you can see, uh, using new technologies, using uh, everything in their advance, because that's how uh, cybercrime uh, hacking works. They are always one step or more steps ahead from the defense. And uh, thus we go to this guy. I think you know him very, very well. Everybody knows him. And I, many of you, you like wondering right now, uh, hmm, I guess that you, you know who, who he is. Well, this is the famous Nigerian prince since the 1995. I hope that you didn't help him in order to send you some money uh, because it seems that we have 2020 and many people still buying it and giving information and giving money and get, get into phishing atta attacks and attempts. So we have in 2020, the last decade, this attempt, the Nigerian prince has, uh, there are 2.5 billion lost over this uh, last de decade. So imagine that we have something since 1995 and in 2020, it's still relevant and it still uh, get uh, get the attackers paid. Okay, and so many people are buying it. So we, we need to focus on the real aspect behind it. That's social engineering. In the context of information security, social engineering is the psychological man manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. So you know how it works. Somebody finds your weak spot, and that weak spot is in, in business, in personal hobbies, or whatever, tricks you into uh, buying and clicking somewhere that you shouldn't. So everything starts with us because we are the fish. And where, at the, that point, the attacker goes into an information gathering uh, and he needs to collect everything about uh, the target and everything means everything that we as uh, people have in the social media in the world because everybody can look for us, search for us, google us and find information about us, our job and uh, remember that we have two entities. We have our business entity, where people that will work in a, uh, in a business, and we have our personal entity. But there is a common point there that these two entities combine, because most of you, or all of you, have your business uh, information and things that you do on your social media. Within uh, all your personal uh, hobbies and stuff like that. So I think that everybody uh, shared the same thing about IT Protect Connections and the work as they do uh, with uh, uh, their favorite team, their favorite music, etc. So, an attacker collects all the information about him. And this is what he can use. He can use everything about you. Okay. Uh, so, have that in mind when you're posting things online. And one other thing that has to do with phishing and social engineering is that you need to stay relevant. And by, mean, by relevant, I mean that uh, attackers you use what is trending at the moment, what is uh, actually in the news or something about you. Uh, this is a very good example about coronavirus domains registration uh, at the first uh, three months of 2020. 
Why I'm pointing this out? Because as you know, and many of you know, and uh, people that are in uh, AutoExec have already uh, watched the uh, Kipriano's uh, presentation uh, two years back about uh, phishing. We were talking about domain registration because people come and register domains in order uh, to use them in phishing the, uh, attacks so to have a valid domain name in order to trick you that you're going to Microsoft and instead of Microsoft they have changed one letter it's like something that can trick you into uh, clicking so at that point uh, we have systems and programs like GoFish and uh, I will stop this uh, the presentation right now for, to, to show you uh, some uh, small examples okay uh, currently, I am uh, at my virtual machine. In uh, let me show you, this is uh, a Windows 10 machine that I have, and uh, I also um, let me. This is no Windows 10. I'm sorry, Kali MPN. This is a Kali machine. This is my virtual machine in Azure. I will use CL console for those that don't know what serial console is and what we can do especially with virtual machines you know, that are Linux and uh, like Kali you can visit my blog blacktrack.jar uh, and check uh, one good uh, blog that I have about using uh, Kali so I am logging in and what I'm going to, to show you is for example one of uh, common uh, applications that they use in social engineering it's like more for script kiddies more for people that want everything uh, easy is the set toolkit social engineering toolkit okay so we have set toolkit okay I'm gonna don't worry I will uh, Zoom in, okay, and right now I can do stuff by so simple as clicking one, two, three. For example, I will uh, use that I want social engineering. I'm putting, uh, I'm sorry because I got a message. Uh, I'm going to in uh, this one. And I'm going to use uh, uh, something that can be used. As you can see here, for social engineering, I have many options. Okay, from spare facing, website attack vectors, everything. And it is so simple for someone to create a, a link that it can send it to you and then trick you into clicking on it uh, I'm not going to, to go furthermore you can check for example that uh, we can have a site cloner for example right here so it's like that and I will clone Facebook and what as you can see here I'm starting cloning Facebook so I can uh, send a link that someone can be tricked into thinking that he's putting his credentials for Facebook and at that point he will be sending the credentials to me it's so simple the same goes I will try to this is my uh, Windows 10 machine in uh, Azure and I'm pointing this out because we're talking about cloud computing I have two virtual machines on cloud in the cloud and one is Kali Linux and I have access via the serial console even through my phone it's that easy and right now I have uh, a GoFish that I have created uh, some uh, campaigns it's easy like that for example I have created something for IT Brodev connections okay I create users I create email templates everything and then I create the campaign I'm showing you if I'm going fast. Uh, I just need to point out how easy it is for someone to create something and target it to you or whomever. 
Okay, it's that simple. So in my case, I did that, for example, yesterday. Okay, and uh, it's in progress. I did it for me in uh, in Georgia. It was sent, the email, it was opened, and I can get back to you later. It's very, very easy uh, to handle. So let's get back to uh, the presentation. Okay. So my point at this uh, here right now is to point out that using the tools that there are out there is very easy for someone in order to start uh, creating facing campaigns against you, or against your business, or whatever. Okay. But the main idea is that do you know everybody knows how to use the phishing mail? Okay. You know that. Uh, there's the email address and so there's for a fake domain that's why more people are going to register domain to look more like the the legit one so we can trick you into clicking on it uh, these emails have, have always uh, the need the, the the need of an emergency or a threat uh, they have but that's most common because Many make mistakes. The attackers make mistakes, mistakes, and this is how they they do it because they have spelling and grammatical errors. And I think I remember one uh, attempt of uh, tricking the Swift system, the banking system, in in order to to move to transfer money, because they got got this uh, attack uh, by during uh, a, tr a large uh, transfer of money because there was a, a spelling mistake. Then the banks got into the phone in order to check why uh, the mistake, and they they realized that this wasn't uh, initiated by either of them. And of course, m fake email signatures. So you have to check some specific things like that. The fake domain, as you can see, uh, the threat or the emergency that you might find, spelling mistakes, this is a common error from, in most cases, spelling mistakes, the grammatical errors, email, uh, fake email signatures, as you can see, you can go take uh, your pointer without clicking over a link, and then you can check, as you can see here, the bad links, the link that sent you in a, not the domain name that you should uh, visit. Okay, most common users don't know this, and no, don't know what they do, but that's the point. They are pointing to the common users, to the simple users that you, they con, going to fall for it. And this is uh, some of emails that I got. Okay, if you can say above here, we have uh, Outlook support from hugging-low.com. It's just irrelevant. Besides the rest of the email, it's the domain name and the email is fake, it's irrelevant. And in many cases like this, you get your Netflix subscription uh, or your eBay or your Apple suspended. And remember something, uh, in most cases you can see that uh, the images are not loaded and you can load them if you want to. Why is that? If I, if I will go back to, uh, to GoFish, you will see something like uh, like that. If I do a new template, it has a tracking image. This tracking image is what informs the attacker that you opened it. So this is a legit email and you confirmed him yet that somebody is using the, this email. So he will continue attacking that email address. Okay? That's why in most uh, programs like uh, and uh, distros like Cal Linux, most of these things are disabled. Not only for the emails, but also for the uh, when you're visiting a website or stuff like that. The extra information that you need to know is that uh, someone can also manipulate legit documents, website links, etc., and act as intermediate, as a man in the middle. Uh, and I think that you know what's man in the middle. You go, uh, you open a, a link between 
the attacker and the target so all the connection all the, the traffic goes through you so uh, the target the victim gives you all the credentials and all the information to you before ending to to his uh, wanted website or whatever so you have to have this in mind in most phishing uh, uh, attacks there's always a man in the middle so the tools there are many tools uh, out there as I said said toolkit goldfish Necrobrosia is something that you can also watch live at 4.30 it's an expert level you can do it but remember that this is, does, doesn't go on its own but it also goes with registered uh, domains in order to have reputation in order not to see your uh, domain name as a spam or so you have to, to have something legit you can expect to have a registered domain today and tomorrow to make an attack this is something that attackers do for months or, or even years before launching an attack. Okay, but to be honest, as you can understand from all the phishing emails that you have uh, uh, had till now, most attackers are not professional. They are clumsy, they make all these mistakes, they rush, they don't have strategy, and they are script kiddies. Okay? Script kiddies like I did with Set Toolkit or uh, Dofis, this is kind of uh, uh, script kiddie. I didn't go further on this one. It was easy for me to put it, but the professional, I don't, uh, don't uh, work like that. So we have something like that. But to be honest, script kiddies, okay, they're kids <laughs> using scripts, but with a common user, it's like that. Script kiddies versus common user. It's like two kids that they don't know what danger is. One might know, but uh, it comes to the other one with, you know, a bit silly techniques to trick him. Uh, that obviously it's like, uh, let's play hide and seek, and they are trying to, to hide behind uh, the couch. Obviously, they're out or behind their, their hands. It's so simple. But, to be honest, uh, there are professionals out there. Professionals that they do good work. And at this uh, point, for, I will give you an example what professionals uh, might be doing. There's one uh, website uh, that's called Real Good Emails. So when I, I did in the past some uh, tests to my users, I used uh, this site in order to find good emails. So in that, uh, uh, I typed GDPR in order to... Uh, use the trend about GDPR and as you can see here there's so many uh, red emails that you can read that you can create okay I'm not uh, joining that you can create simple as that this is a professional so the professionals can use this without having any uh, mistakes grammatical mistakes and uh, work as they should. In that case, uh, you won't understand anything. If they have the proper domain and uh, have the proper mail, you obviously won't understand anything. And uh, to come even further, this is a, a list that Enisa uh, got out. It's the European Union Agency for Cyber Security. It's the top 15 cyber threats. But uh, if you look it uh, deeply and just Take a moment to check everything. There are 15 from malware, web based attack, phishing, web application attacks, spam, DDoS, denial of service, uh, identity theft, data breach, inside the threat, botnets, blah, 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 blah. You have seen that. But think of it. Take a moment and think. Phishing can be the opening for the at least the 10 of them. If you get a phishing email, you get either uh, start spamming other people, you might get malware, you get, might get identity theft, of course, data breach or information leakage. You can have your PC or the network that you're in get, get into a botnet. You can generally have theft and data loss, ransomware, cyber espionage, crypto jacking. All of this have the chance in the most cases they using by using phishing and we don't give uh, 
the proper mind on that. So when the hackers uh, are attacking, they're trying to attack the weakest link, the system that's not patched uh, or whatever. But in fact, the weakest link is the human factor. Are you targeted? You don't want to be targeted. You want to be, you know, uh, just someone that received a sp uh, spray and pray uh, phishing mail. Generally, attackers work in silence because uh, this can ra raise, uh, you know, attention. But in phishing, some use spray and pray, as I said, this creates noise. So, so many people, this is not the best way, but if it is being done, they create noise by sending many, many, many phishing mails till someone, especially from your organization, clicks on one link because it needs only one person uh, to make the mistake. Okay, so let's go to the, ne the next uh, generation approach, the real threat. I have uh, one email from my previous uh, work. Okay, I have recovered uh, the sensi sensitive information and I will show you uh, this one. So, uh, this is for the Greek audience because they can uh, read Greek. Uh, it seems that this is a phishing email. Okay, what uh, the user did is to call uh, the the hospital, and then we find out that this, this was a legit email, and the user had to send it from the Gmail account that the hospital has. So you have to be uh, careful there. But if you check carefully, and the next one is that the attacker right here we have an attacker because it uses, as you can see, the email that's Romanian or I don't know. Uh, and he has taken the initial uh, uh, content of the email, of a business email, and then sent it with an attachment. So this is very easily for someone to get tricked and click on it. He managed to do phishing, uh, to fish someone from within the company, but obviously that user didn't have uh, uh, the, good, the, the proper access so to attack more, so he took advantage of that user's email, he created such an email and then spread it to more contacts within the company. So have this in mind when you might have something that it, it seems like this is from a colleague or a partner or someone that you will work with. And you have to remember that as we go further and further, keep in mind that uh, phishing is involving it uses the current technology advances, advancements and trends. Uh, and one thing that's happening right now, in ransomware attacks, they are no longer just disrupting companies' operation by destroying data, but threat actors, the attackers, leak the victims' uh, data before creating them in order to blackmail. This is go because of the GDPR, because in, the, in order to get money, they are like, if you pay us, we won't put it out. But if this got out, you know that you, you will have as a company uh, uh, you, a penalty from uh, the GDPR authorities from the European Union. Uh, so the business is going to give money either way. Then it's the ethical on the unethical of the attack. Will they do it or not? It's a different uh, case. So. Let's take it to our entities, our businesses and our families. What can we do in order to avoid that? In most cases, this is the reaction that we have from the user of the clients. Did you click on it? Did you do anything? He was like, no, I didn't do anything. It was like that. I didn't do anything. But after the, you reply and you push a bit, did you try to open the email or link? Yeah, but it did, but it didn't happen anything. You know, most users uh, expected that. Uh, the whole system go, is going to blow up or something like that. But the attack is that if you click, nothing happens. And that in most cases means that something happened. Okay. So how do I manage in secure business environment uh, like that? And all starts with the trainings. You have to educate your own uh, people again and again and again. And you have to test users. Big companies, like for example, the one that I'm currently working on, they're doing tests all over 
place and very very often you can't realize if they're uh, doing a, it's valid or not but they're evaluating everybody all the time they reduce accessibility to people that they seem that they bring danger to the company and uh, there are also other uh, solutions that can handle that it's like to segment your network to have different accounts uh, to change password often and then reevaluate do the same thing over and over again so we have a uh, to the main point and the main question we have a phishing attack someone clicks on something who to blame what do you think who will be the person or the entity to bl be blamed in a situation like that of course the attacker is to blame because he's doing the attack but besides that he's doing his job but we're looking as a, in a, a person as, a, as George Kavalakis I have given my personal information to the bank and they have a data breach and they get my information my kids information my family's information out there uh, whatever that means I have to blame someone for that because I lost uh, uh, whatever dangers uh, that my bring uh, not that I'm pointing that you have to blame someone but this is something that you have to think can we blame someone on this it's not my issue on this one so in an actual business case in 2011 I checked uh, 150 users personal profile social media in a period of four months I had uh, I found only one person that I couldn't all the social media were blocked uh, 15 years the users had um, their work and include their actual password that they have in the in the business in plain sight on their profiles uh, five users use their business email in LinkedIn and all of you know that this is a huge mistake in the in the, in the annual meeting uh, I report the findings the reaction from all the people uh, it was like to clap they were happy about it it seemed they were happy. they clapped I reported the one person that uh, they had a profile his profile secured they found it overwhelming they clapped okay I provided a list of information I managed to get from some of them I had some personal information that I shouldn't be able to to know but they had it on the social media when I did that uh, the audience kept quiet quiet nobody clapped it was like whoa something happened now they started getting more into it I provided a list of information from company data that I managed to get by using information that I found on their social media the company and the rest of the, the crowd seemed troubled so what was the next step after that we started trainings workshops on cyber security on facing trainings on how to report a, a suspicious activity or email and uh, information on emails on new attacks in, uh, in other companies were a common thing every week so everybody know, knew what's go what, what was going on in the world okay and uh, this research that they showed that for a three month period of training the phishing prone, prone uh, users based on uh, 4 million users uh, reduced uh, how the percentage was reduced on how many people clicked on facing emails so at that point I did the same thing on my entity during that time the first thing uh, two months after training we had this percentage 85 percent it was okay 10 percent took the bait six months later it was like that five percent took the bait imagine that they ignored it or never opened it part of the the orange one is the people like CEOs and stuff like that that they get tons of mails and most of the time they don't read anything of that but two years later imagine that two years later this is what happened at first I had I test them with and just to be sure uh, this is our, where the results of my test I sent them phishing emails in order to see the reaction 
the IT department sent phishing mails to check the users. Okay, we're testing them. So these are not actual phishing attempts, but our uh, attempts to test our users. So two years later, we had that result. But right now we come to the human factor. Okay, from where uh, there's a 60%, 50% put in credentials. Everybody opened the email. And okay, you might be like that. Oh my God, what happened? You seem doomed. And in most of the cases, yeah, yeah, no most, all the cases, you are doomed if you uh, finish like that. But you have to think the human factor. And this goes to the business level. This goes to everybody, to you and me and our colleagues. Because if you start thinking of it, nobody's thinking about employees' mental health. We're talking about two years later from the initial uh, report of mine, during the middle of the crisis, the financial crisis. That means everybody here in Greece, you know the Greeks better, uh, didn't feel good. The, they weren't, we are no, we weren't at our best, okay? So we had unstable environments during the financial crisis. Most of the companies reduced personnel and people started not caring enough because in most cases, most companies, they weren't getting paid. They were like two or three salaries behind. Uh, after some time, they were telling me that they have forgotten the previous trainings. So it was also my fault because I had the same uh, psychological status like the rest of them. So I didn't do my job at best. So uh, the thing is, it was like that. Uh, oh, my friend is going, I'm sorry. Please don't send me a message right now. Uh, the thing is that they forgot everything about it. So, and at that point, they realized that the user's identity and the personal identity are connected. Okay. Think of that because when we are so, uh, you know, we don't care enough and stuff like that, we have to identify disconnected and the attackers take advantage of it. Especially this happened, especially during the, the financial crisis that's still going on in Greece. And uh, in many cases, in many businesses, that they had a similar situation, okay? Uh, let me check. So, what you had to do from our side, and what I say to other people to do, is to categorize uh, the users. And I'm almost about to close. We need to have a behavioral analysis. How are users... Uh, work, how our users act, and in many cases, ideas and peer systems focus on behavior uh, analysis and they block things that the users don't do. A user won't go to upload stuff on, uh, I don't know, one website that never uh, visited. Stuff like that. So, we have to be careful of that one. Try to, be, uh, to avoid becoming a target. Treat everyone and everything like a threat. Don't click on anything. Use a possible multi-factor authenticator in order to uh, get uh, to log into somewhere. But Necro Browser can strip your two-factor authentication, as you can see at 430. And uh, try to segment your network services and access. Never security is never enough. So you have to think new ideas in order to control and to be able to protect yourself and your company. So, uh, what I'm saying to people is like to try to think different. For example, if you're using different login ID uh, for your email than your actual email address. This is my, for example, Microsoft Outlook, you have all your account aliases, and if you sit down uh, below, you, you have signing preferences. So, what I do, is from all these accounts, I use a different account to log in than what I'm using as an email and what I'm using as an email to give to other people. 
Thus, that means that I'm 100% protected. No, I'm not. But I segment my accounts because if I'm using uh, Kavalakis uh, at uh, hotmail.com to log into to Facebook and I'm using George at outlook.com to log into my actual email, this is something that the attacker needs to find out in order to, to take the one uh, uh, alias in order to enter to the other. He doesn't know if it's an alias or not. He sees an email address. Uh, so this is an example of what you can do. Uh, generally, you have to think that we need security awareness training for everybody, not only for us, for our colleagues, for our family. Because imagine that we come on the same question. Who to blame? The user, the IT department, the company, no one. Take a moment. We lack digital education. We lack digital education. What does that mean? When you, we were young, our parents told us not to take a lollipop from a stranger. Don't do stuff like that. But in the digital world, we do that. Someone comes and tells us, hello, I'm your uncle. Uh, open your door for the door for me in the digital world. And we opened it. If this happens to the actual world, we won't. Why? Because we are not trained to do it. We need more training. So my uh, idea for you and everybody is to train yourself first. Try their Google and many other entities have seminars, easy seminars to follow and to do that. Evaluate yourself. Uh, train everybody that you work with. Train your family members. And uh, think that, that try to make it like a test. If someone doesn't get a pass mark, he has to do it all over again. Again, because it is that critical that we need to keep going and protecting ourselves. And in order to protect ourselves, we have to start knowing what are the dangerous things out there. And especially fishing, it's very crazy that 25 years later, we still have things like that. Uh, so, thank you. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. I'm sorry for that small error that I had. So I'm waiting for your questions. Um, give me one moment. So I need to, to get here in order to check all the questions. Give me one moment. Close yeah, because I have all those messages. Okay, I see many things. Uh, okay, I need to go. Damn, you had a couple of questions. That's good. So, let's start from uh, the other one. I have many uh, messages. Thank everybody. Nasklavakis from the, the USFA. And many friends of mine. America is here, USA is here. Uh, let's go to the questions because I'm trying to find the questions. Uh, okay. Let's check. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have some issues. Okay. I'm sorry that I didn't uh, make zoom in uh, all of the points, but I didn't have the, the same experience as you did. I tried to do on uh, uh, what I think the uh, best. Um, and uh, people think that I should uh, do it in, in Greek. Uh, I would like to do it in Greek, but uh, there were a couple of people in uh, from other countries uh, uh, in the presentation that I had to do it in, in English. I'm sorry um, if I met you uh, or have any issue on that. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, the, I have one message from Leonidas uh, Kodoulis. Did you just say that the hospital had an uh, authorized Gmail account? Yeah, they used the uh, Gmail account. I don't know the reason. They had to use the Gmail account uh, because they had some issue from the actual account. I don't know the reason, but they were sending uh, emails, you know, to make uh, orders and stuff like that from that Gmail account. 
uh, so it was not just weird for us it was uh, it's not secure as you can understand it's easily uh, many things can go bad in that case um, the way um, Yeah, and uh, Leonidas continues to think that most of us noticed uh, the recent attack with fake AD emails, yeah. Many things like that happened. Uh, we have uh, many question um, points during the, the discussion. I don't know if they're, they're not all, uh, all of them uh, questions. Uh, so I'm trying to, to check everything. Uh, uh, Spiros uh, Karabinis said that IDS or IPS system do not stop a phishing campaign. Of course, they are not stopping a phishing campaign, but uh, it's something that I said that uh, if the user is compromised and they have a, an attacker within the system, a malware, whatever, they can have the behavior analysis. So the, his computer is starting acting differently. That when the user is using it and uh, as also he said this is called zero trust and this is the right word uh, this is a trend that everybody started and Mike thought as well we start with zero trust we don't trust everyone anyone and then we go forward from that um, I have a couple of more. There, you are, there are many uh, comments. I like that. I, I will need to cut to, to get, you know, to talk to you later on on one on one. They're really interesting. Many of them. Um, so, I think that's it. I have to thank everybody uh, for giving me the opportunity to be here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, even uh, with my. I don't know, bad in English, my Greek will be better, but either way, I think that you got the point. Thank you, and I'll see you around.